you haven't given God space to be Lord. God had never been too early nor too late. And for once, He has sacrificed for us, of which our sins have been forgiven. Sin has plunged every man and every woman into death. The wages of sin is death. I pray that the Spirit of God will remove that covering and that the good things in you shall be seen. We are more valuable to him than all the other creation. Come, let's magnify God. Let's exalt his name. Then the person is talking about what the Lord has done for him. And because he want to get eternal life, he was ready to lose all the visible things so that he will focus on the invisible which are of eternal value. Does his things according to his own time and at his own pace. Whatever your will is, I accept it. What I accept, who I accept, how I accept, and even when I accept. Today, as we bring our 21 days of fasting and prayers to a close, I want to remind all of us that these three weeks we've been speaking about one person, the Holy Spirit. He is God. He's not just a power. He is God. My hope and belief is that these three weeks will not be a waste on us. And that after today, we will continue in the things that we have learned. So I'm here to remind us that our theme 
is when the apostolic started. When the apostolic started. When we talk about when the apostolic started, we are talking about the beginning of the church in the Acts of the Apostles. We are also talking about when the apostolic church began in the UK during the Welsh Revival. And we're also talking about when the church started in Ghana in 1935. You see, one man of God said, and I believe it, he said, you can know your destiny by looking at your history. If you get to know the purpose of God in bringing you into being, you get to know how God started, you get to know your roots, you can predict where God is taking you. If we look at all these three periods that we are calling when the apostolic started. One thing is definite. The works of the Holy Spirit. What made a difference is the works of the Holy Spirit. When the church started in Ghana, they were not that many. No one knows. But God used them to shake the nation. Idol worship came to its lowest point. Because of the Holy Ghost. Things aren't the same anymore. But we are saying that we are going back. I said we are going back to the days of power to the days of miracles to the days of true conversions into Christianity for we serve the same God so our topic today is the indispensability of the Holy Spirit for the church in other words, we cannot do without him. In our days, we are trying to do without him. We are trying to use human talents. We are trying to use human charisma. We are trying to use wealth. We are trying to use marketing strategies. We are trying to use numbers. But this is how far it's brought us. Our current state as a church makes it clear that we cannot do without him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Yes, see. I will build my church. Mercy, my sorry. And the same Jesus said, I'm leaving this earth physically. And I'll bring you another comforter. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have neglected this comforter. We have neglected this third person of the Godhead. And that is why we are where we are. So I want to state some five things we have neglected. Just to make sure we go back. You see, whilst I was sitting there, I was looking at the electrical sockets there. You see, there's power in them. But unless you plug in, there will be no power flowing through. But these days, we are plugging in. But no power is coming. The reason is that the mains are off. 
Are you here with me? We are getting frustrated. Because our fathers told us. If you do this, you get that result. We are doing those things. But we are not getting the results. The means is off. The Holy Ghost is grieved because we have neglected him. And we have neglected him because we, we seem to have forgotten who the owner of the church is. When Jesus said, I will build my church, he placed his stamp of ownership on the church. The church belongs to him. It does not belong to men. The church belongs to God. The church does not belong to the council of the church. The church does not belong to the president of the church. The church does not belong to your pastor. The church belongs to God. And Jesus said he will build it. We just have to allow him to build it. He is the builder. He has given us instructions concerning his building. But today's generation disregards the authority of the word of God. When the word of God comes to us, we now want to analyze it to see whether we will obey it or not. I want you to know the word of God is good for all times. All seasons and all places. So let us remember he's the owner and let us give place to the authority of his word. The second neglect is the neglect of the Holy Spirit. We have grieved him with our unholy union with the world. We have loved the world and the things of the world. We have lived carelessly. We have lived in sin. And we have neglected him and replaced him with human systems. If you read James, the chapter 4, the verse 4, it says, You adulterous people, don't you know that the friendship of the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Ask your neighbor, are you a friend of the world? If you are a friend of the world, then it doesn't matter how well dressed you are, it doesn't matter where you find yourself, even in the house of God, you are an enemy of God. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For these things are passing away. In others, we want to be like them. We want to have what they have. We want to do things the way they do them. No, the Apostle Paul made it clear to us. In 2 Corinthians the chapter 6, the verses 17 and 18. It says, therefore, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will be a father to you. And you will be my sons and daughters. Say it the Lord. 
One other neglect is that we have neglected true prayer. We pray, but we don't pray. Why am I saying we pray, but we don't pray? We have grieved the Holy Spirit by importing into the church fetish practices. Most of our prayer topics are so selfish. God has made us his ambassadors that we should seek the good of his kingdom. But as ambassadors, we have put down the needs of the kingdom. And all we cry for is our individual prosperity. But the Lord who knows all things asked us to seek the kingdom and then to seek his righteousness and then he will add all these things to us. We are rather seeking the things we were asked not to seek. And listen to why we pray a lot. But we get very few answers. James chapter 4, the verse 3. There is when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Church, let us remember why we are here on earth. We are to represent him and be his witnesses. If we seek him first, if we seek his righteousness, he will give us all things to enjoy. He will give them to us so that we use them without loving them. Our hearts belong to God. Let's love him and use things. Let us not use God and love things. We have neglected this also. The neglect of uniting with those the Holy Ghost chooses to use. When the Holy Spirit chooses someone to work through him, instead of uniting with the person and, and helping the person and being with the person, no, we envy, we compete, we fight. Why not me? You are in the choir and you want to be the lead singer. So when someone else is the lead singer, you lose your energy. You want to be the best preacher. You are the pastor, but the deacon preaches better than you, and you have a problem. The Holy Ghost chooses whom to use. Are you here with me? I said the Holy Ghost chooses whom to use. And Whichever person he raises, he raises for the benefit of the whole church. So let us know it is for our own good. Let us stop fighting each other. It is God who works in us both to will and to do. Joseph's brothers were fighting him. They just didn't know. They were so ignorant that his prosperity will be their salvation. Is somebody getting wisdom today? 
the person you are so much against maybe God has made him a Joseph in your life that his prosperity that his rise to glory might open doors for you stop fighting your Josephs I want to say particularly to ministers no, the whole job does not belong to you yours is to identify the talents and raise the talents to do the work of the ministry yours is to equip them to so allow them to be greater than you I allow them to be greater than you men we do not have a monopoly over the gifts of the spirit so when the Holy Ghost chooses to anoint the woman powerfully to work in his church create space otherwise you'll be fighting against the church if we are asking for the Holy Ghost to come then let us make a way for him lastly I want to say that one thing we neglect we neglect to give him the glory we have given his glory to men we raise men of God and we fail to raise Christ we are servants we are instruments of ministry Look at what is written in Revelation, the chapter 4, the verse 11. When the four beasts are praising God in his glory and holiness, the Bible says the 20 and four elders, they fall down they cast their crowns before him and this is what they say on our behalf thou art worthy O Lord to receive praise God hallelujah we are men, we are not worthy to receive his glory. So when God works within our midst, let us know that it is he. And let's give the glory to him. If we ascribe the glory to men, we will grieve the spirit of God. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things And for thy pleasure And for thy pleasure And for thy pleasure Hallelujah Amen. They are and and were So Jesus knew The nature of men so he told his disciples in Luke 17 10 so you also when you have done everything you were told to do you should say we are unworthy servants we have only done our duty praise God hallelujah we can bring back when the apostolic starts. oh we have been there before we can be there again say we have been there before in his name we can be there again and I pray that in our lifetime the church of God will be revived the church of God will be restored for his glory and our benefit 
This and only this can bring us back to when the apostolic started. As was said to Jacob. Let us arise and go back to Bethel. Where God revealed himself to us. Apostolic church. Let us arise. And go back to our place of encounter. Let's go back to the God. Who called us when we were nothing. And made us who we are today. Shall we rise? I'm reading a prayer in Lamentations 5.21. He says, turn us back to you, O Lord. And we will be restored. Renew our days as of old. Let this be your prayer. Turn us back to you, O Lord. And we will be restored. Renew our days as of old. The church is not the building, the church is the people. I'm talking about you. So with your hands raised, begin to surrender to God. Begin to confess to God. Begin to ask for his help. The Lord, turn me, turn me, O God. Restore me unto yourself. Give me my better experience, Lord. And let your name be glorified in my life. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Heavenly Father. For we know that you will do it again. It is for this reason, Lord, that your son came to die. A necessary death. It's for the same reason that the Holy Ghost came. That the church of God might be a true witness. Have your way in your church, Lord. We commit ourselves unto you individually and collectively. Come and have your way. Amen. Cleanse us in the blood. Amen. Take your place once more. Amen. Let us experience you Amen. even as your word has promised. We declare, Lord, make us ready. Amen. Make us ready. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.